Hey guys, what's up? It's Adam Searin. Thank you, Loopy Pro and the Loopy Pro community. You guys are super cool. We're going to dive into control profiles today, and we're going to take a look at why Loopy Pro is so special because of this and how you can use this to your advantage. This is great, especially if you are someone who has a lot of different MIDI controllers. I hate YouTube videos that are blah, 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 blah. So we're going to get right into it. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you guys again. Here we go. Let's go. All right, so I'm gonna show you why control profiles and Loopy Pro are so special compared to the competition. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like Quantaloop, but you get one control profile, that's it. You do your MIDI control assignments. Now, you know, you can do um, multiple things on, you know, one button and all that kind of stuff. But again, you only get one MIDI control profile. So that is it. Okay, all right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you a quick rundown of control profiles. Control profiles are basically um, what connects your MIDI device to Loopy Pro and tells it what to do. So for instance, I've got a Nectar Pacer uh, profile here. I'm gonna click on that, and it's got all my actions and my map laid out for that MIDI device. Um, I've also got my Retro Loop Pro here. Um, anyway, so one of the cool things that you can do is you can build by hitting new profile, you can build new layouts for your current projects, or, um, once you do that, you can actually copy them over to your global profiles. The cool thing about project profiles is that they load with your profile, um, and one of the cool things that I like is you can set up different ones of these and then duplicate your project and that way uh, you don't necessarily have to create a whole new project just to, to have a preset or template that loads up um, that's a different layout or for a different controller whatever so as you can see I have a lot of controllers um, there's other cool uses uh, for profiles in the project profile. So I'm going to show you that here. Um, one example that uh, we're going to do here really quick is we're going to create two buttons. One, two. Okay. Each one of these buttons, when you press it, okay, we're going to type in profile. Okay. We're going to select switch. Okay. And we look at this switch means enable one disabling the rest. And that's what we want. We want to hit target. We want to select our one of our project profiles and that's it for that button all right now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do the same thing here all right so I'm gonna hit retro pro and there you go same thing all right so now what's gonna happen is whenever I click this button it is going to select the Nectar Pacer preset, okay? And then you'll know that because this button is filled in. When I select this button, it's going to, it, it's gonna disable this Nectar preset, or it should. I don't know why it's being funny. Hang on. Can I do something? Ah, it should be switch. Sorry, my bad. All right, so now when I come over here and I do this, it's gonna switch, all right? So there it is. So I click that, now I go to control settings, and we switch to RetroLoop Pro. Where this could be really handy is, say one of these was like your overdub mode, um, or uh, you wanted one of these to change how these pedals operate, or give you different functionality, then you could have one switch or a follow action, um, which is a whole nother video that can activate between these profiles all right so it's pretty 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 cool the cool stuff that you can do with this okay so i have a no sunshine this is more of an ableton style thing that i did all right so each of these things right here will start a section of the song but it also selects a different control profile so that with a five pedal setup or four pedal setup, I can actually live loop on top of each of these rows. So with control profiles, um, it gives me the ability 
um, to switch what my pedals do so that I can control each row when that section is playing. It's pretty neat. And then these little guys are just indicators of which control profile uh, is activated. Um, it just kind of helps me to have that visual. But that is what control profiles are. And that is what they do. To create a control profile, you're gonna go over here to control settings. Okay, as you can see, look, I got Ableton A, B, C, D. All right, and the reason I labeled it Ableton is because it's Ableton style, all right? So you just click new profile, and then you start adding your functions, and that is it. Okay, and if you wanna do a global profile, then you can do that here. And if you create a profile in another project that you want to be able to use in your other projects, just add it to this global profile list. And same way, you can come over here and you can transfer it to your project. So there you go. And that is uh, a quick rundown of control profiles.